From now on, we're going to hold questions until the end. <laughs> Try to put it in more. All right, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, I'll just go through page by page um, how this material is structured. Sure. Um, and we'll essentially start from page one. I think one of the more important aspects is the, the description of the amendment. The, what we're describing is an amendment to the current language in our, in our zoning ordinance. Can you say anything, please? Excuse me? Hello? Yeah. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Makita Hill. I'm the Assistant Director for Planning and Zoning Division. Thank you. You're welcome. I, I, forgot to say, I, I, I forgot to say that Makita got promoted to the Assistant Director. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, to continue. Um, ordinance amendment describes what it is we're amending. It is an amendment to the language, the current language in the zoning ordinance. That's what this document is, is built around. Um, when you look at the first few pages of a document like this, um, the amendment, the authority, scope, purpose, findings, these are boilerplate subjects that you would find in any action like this. And the purpose for that language, section by section, is essentially to build the legal foundation so that the governing body can actually consider to change the language that's currently under review. Um, one thing that I will call attention to on page three is a section called state and federal exemption. And there are a number of acts that are listed there. What this section means is that there are a series of issues, uh, water quality, solid waste, rangeland protection, um, cultural properties, historic preservation, all of these things. These issues are governed by either a state entity or a federal entity or both. And those entities govern these issues within our jurisdiction. That's why this is in here. And so if we encounter one of these subjects in any of our applications, we have to defer to those entities for those things. Now, we have been asked that for each one of these things, you know, what are they? There's one sentence that says something, and we've been asked to add at least a paragraph to each one of these things so it simply explains what it is and, and and who the, the governing body is. And you may have a state act that reflects a federal action, and we will explain all of that material in a future draft. But that is, the important thing is not just what the issue is, but that the preemption exists within our jurisdiction. And I hope, I hope that makes so sense. So we'll just stop you there for a minute. So yes. just to give you an example of what we mean by you're all going to be carrying your hair up. One of the things I'm going to insist on is that we get an explanation of every one of these A through O, so that we have some idea of what regulations are applied by others, who's responsible for ensuring that they're complied with, what the penalties are if you're if you're if you're in violation of any of these acts. Okay, mm -hmm. and to the extent it's available, any information about what's been happening in New Mexico under all these acts, whether you know, somebody is actually doing something here about these or whether they right. exist only on paper and are applied in other states or whatever. That's probably gonna take two meetings just because we're talking about all these different acts and how they're going to apply. But it's important that we have that information because we're basically saying what the county commission said is, and we're going to follow their <coughs> rule, is if somebody else is responsible for something, we're not going to duplicate that, okay? So the first thing we have to find out is, well, what are they responsible for? Because that will define the areas that we're not going to work on, and if you have some things that you're concerned about that aren't covered by any of these, it would be appropriate to raise them after we go through this ordinance and say, Here's something that, as far as I know, A through O doesn't cover. Why don't you cover it? Okay. So. okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. And 
And as is the case for most ordinances that, that you will review, we will always have a definition section. And as you can see, there are a number of definitions proposed. These definitions describe things that are in the text of this proposed document. They help the staff, the planning commission, the county commission, the public understand when they run across something, what is it? But the key thing here is that these are words that are specific to this piece of proposed legislation. So again, I'll make a comment, which is, if you're concerned about this ordinance, one of the things you want to do is to read the definitions very carefully, okay? Because the definitions govern in many instances. We turned down a really good proposal from Placitas to establish a uh, small village for elders because of language that was in the definitions. Okay? So it's very important if you want to get involved in this process to read these definitions very carefully and always ask yourself if there's something that the definition permits, is there something else uh, elsewhere in the definitions that prohibit something. If there's something is if something says, you know, more than 30 acres can't be done this way, is there something that says what happens if the same idea is proposed on less than 30 acres? Okay? I mean you have to read these things very, very carefully because very often the decision that we are going to make or the county commission is going to make is going to hinge on what how the, how a term is defined. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. And then moving on to page 11, Article 3 is establishment of these planning areas, energy development areas that we described them that are illustrated on the blue, yellow, and red map. Um, the way this section is structured, Commissioners, is that we have established that there is a need to view the, area, the county in these terms because of population and population density that we see a need to look at the areas in that way. What you see as far as findings for these areas is simply to describe how we go about making that decision and what the justification is. Findings are simply a way to establish why we did something. And so we've proposed two sets of findings, one for each area that simply describes that one is not a highly populated area and the area to the south is, okay. So, so just to be, so again, this is a very important part because there are different standards for each area. Mm -hmm. So are you saying that the Northwest Energy Development Area is everything in yellow? Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay. And, and the, the and Southeast the Area? Southeast is Energy Development Area is everything in red? Yes, that's okay. correct. Yes, thank you. And so it probably, well, I mean, we can get in again, I'm jumping ahead. It's probably going to be good to link this language to the map rather than to some text because it's there, there is no way that we could enumerate every single one of those yellow areas in text. Oh no. Okay. Uh, moving on, Mr. Chairman, page 13 of the proposed language establishes the application process for exploratory only facility, which is a situation where we receive an application from an applicant who simply wants to drill to explore to see what is there. Uh, this process will be common to both the northwest and to the southeast as we've illustrated. We have simply proposed this to be an administrative temporary use permit. What we have done as proposed is to propose it as an administrative review for this permit, but to have it time sensitive, simply because for an exploratory facility, there is simply no reason for it to be an ongoing operation because then it becomes something else. Typically in our zoning ordinance, our temporary use permits are um, structured by time. Uh, this has a time structure of a maximum of 120 days. We've received advice from uh, the New Mexico Oil Conservation Division that there is simply no need for a uh, setting that is designed to be temporary to last longer than 120 days. So, now, um, yeah. let me raise an issue that came out in the Sandridge discussion that uh, 
Um, we, we never really explored because we, we the hearings were cut off. Uh, we need we need a good idea of how the permitting process for an exploratory well, what OCD's exploratory well permit, fits in with this, and then. We need an under. My understanding is that OCD issues an exploratory permit and requires a report on what happens before they issue a production permit. That, that may be wrong, but that's what I understood from the testimony during Sandwich. And so we need to be sure we understand that, and then we need to understand how our process fits in with that process. I'm also curious about why somebody would drill an exploratory well not knowing whether they're going to get permission to make it a production well. But if that's, so I just want to be sure that we all understand, one, exactly how this all fits together. And I'd like somebody to, at some point, explain to us why you're willing to take the risk to drill an exploratory well when you don't have permission from the state or from us to do a production right. well. Mr. Chairman, may I just interject sure. real quick? Um, first of all, it would slow down the permitting process for an exploratory well driller to change, change it over to a production well, because then they have to come through the county. But I think it was Shell who did it. I think back in the 70s and 80s, uh, Shell came through this whole valley and popped a bunch of holes all up and down the valley uh, doing uh, geological work uh, to find out if there's anything here. Uh, a lot of that information is down at New Mexico Tech. Uh, OCD knows about the, the same information. Um, there are instances where an entity will come into an area where they don't have <coughs> definitive information and they will just pop a bunch of holes and they want to find out what's down there. Okay. It, it does happen. Yeah. That, I still want to make sure we understand sure. the information from one to the other. Right, I and understand. And, the, and the, the consequences of issuing a permit to drill an exploratory well, and then after, let's say, somebody discovers oil, saying, well, that's very interesting, we're not going to give you a production. Uh, that's, <coughs> the risk that's inherent in this order. Right. I, I, again, I want to make right. sure that everybody understands that that's possible. Correct. And okay, we could say, that's wonderful, glad you found oil, you can't pump it out of there. Correct. It's inherent in this ordinance. No, it is. Uh, <coughs> question? Any question on this? Yes, Commissioner Brown. Were you planning to move on past uh, the Northeast or the exploratory only? Or? Oh, I just, uh, Mr. Chairman, Commissioner Brown, I was going to go on to explain the contents of the application okay. and why we're asking for the things that we're asking so for. So you'll kind of go through the process that's required? Yes. Okay, then I'll stop and let you do that. Okay, thank you. Uh, commissioners, uh, as you will see uh, about midway page 13, we have a list of things that are required for our review, whether it's administrative, conditional use permit, you're going to see the same things listed over and over again. We are trying to figure out a way to consolidate all that. Um, we would certainly like not to be so repetitive. But for the purposes of the initial review, at least it spells out what it is that we are asking for and, and why. And so this is the, the administrative process essentially introduces us all to what it is the county wants to see from an applicant. And obviously, the first thing is that the, the permit that is required for the activity from the Oil and Conservation Division has to be submitted with this application. We need to know up front that the state has approved it before we even look at it. And so we ask that of all of our applications, is that it has to be reviewed by the state first. Now, there'll be a list of other things, facility plan, road plan, fire, waste disposal. I'll just explain all those briefly, and then I'll be a little more repetitive as we go on because you're gonna see those things again. Facility plan simply discusses those buildings and structures associated with the activity. We simply need to see this, not unlike any other site plan we would require of an applicant for a commercial or an industrial operation. That is, is what is being discussed. Road plan is the proposed routes that vehicles will travel to and from the facility. 
And we do need to know that for a number of reasons. Are they county roads, um, state roads? Um, are they proposing to travel through a municipality? And that at every juncture with a jurisdiction, we need to have a road plan to make sure that the appropriate jurisdictions have a chance to review them and express any concerns they may have. Um, fire, police, emergency response, this is another boilerplate requirement. We need to know what they have in place in the event of an emergency and the extent to which any coordination with the county or other entity would be needed to handle an emergency on the subject site. Um, waste disposal plan um, is pretty self-explanatory. How are they going to do this? Again, this part of the um, application is for both areas. Um, in the south east area, as we have proposed, given the population density, number of people there are, um, we do have some concerns about what are called reserve pits, which are open areas where drilling waste or, or, or discarded. The staff proposes to prohibit those in the areas where there is the greatest population. And so you'll see that mentioned throughout this application over and over again. But these are boilerplate things that the staff is asking for, whether it would be an administrative review or a conditional use permit review. And there will be a few other things as we go along for um, exploration and production. Does, does that make, make sense? Yes. OK. Uh, commissioners, moving on to page 14, we get into uh, a situation where someone will either come in with an application for both exploration and production, and they want both issues covered, or they've been exploring, and they find something that they want to get into production. They'll have to go through this also. So both would apply in that instance. And so before you go too far, yes, before we leave the 3.5 there on page 13, so if I just, just so I understand the process here, as I see it here, is that the application is for an administrative temporary use permit, and that's approved at the director level? Yes, that's And right. it's limited to 120 days? Yes. That's all they get? Yes. Okay. So, and, and then pretty narrow. And then if I may, Mr. Chairman, I believe that uh, D is very, very explicit in telling the applicant that if you want to move on to production, you've got to go through this whole process now. Okay, you can't just go up to OCD and get a production permit. If you find something in a hole that you were exploring, now you have to come back to the county and you have to go through the process. All right, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, moving on, we will go through the application process for the Northwest Energy Area for Exploration and Production. And as the director said, someone who is doing an exploration wants to go to production, they have to come through this. Many times we'll see someone who will simply apply for the ability to do both. And that, that would apply here too. And as always, whatever permits they need from the state, they have to have those approved and part of their application. Facility, road plan, fire emergency. I wanted to explain just a little bit about item four on page 15, which is a stormwater pollution prevention plan or a SWIP. Um, the expectation is not that they produce one from scratch for the purposes of this application. They're already required to do one from the state. We simply need a copy of it to make sure that they have fulfilled that. And if there are any comments from the state on the SWIP, we would want to see those as well. So I just wanted to explain that a little bit. Now, once we get into um, a situation where exploration and production may be happening, we do have a requirement for a terrain management plan, simply because there is an expectation that once exploration and production has been completed, there is going to be closure of the site, and we need to make sure that they have submitted plans that are going to show us how to do that. And so that, that is another boilerplate uh, requirement. Um, I wanted to explain a little bit about item 7 on page 16 because there is a mention of a requirement for an air quality permit, but it may not be applicable in all instances. There may be certain types of machinery that is involved in a production facility that the New Mexico Environment Department does have jurisdiction over. 
We may not see it in all instances, but there may be an instance where we would. So certain types of machinery do fall under that State Department's jurisdiction. Okay, are there any questions? Could you give us an example of some of that type of equipment? You know, and not being an engineer, I, I, I couldn't really describe that. I'm, I'm simply forwarding what's been, been passed on to me that there's... Mr. Chairman, if I may, a clarification, let me give you a different example. We're also not, uh, we're also not experts in solid waste of human feet. So what we do when you come to get a building permit uh, is somehow you have to handle your waste. Typically in the county, it's a, it's a septic tank. We, we don't get the plans on a septic tank or anything like that. What we do is we get a copy of the, uh, of the septic tank permit issued by the state that's attached with our application process. As long as you do that and you have that, it's been covered. The state does have the expertise to do that. We just ensure that you went to NMED, you got your septic tank permit, and you're good to go. It's the same. same. All right, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, moving on to the Southeast Area Energy Area. The exploration and production requirements are uh, essentially the same. As I mentioned earlier, under the administrative review process for the exploration only, in the Southeast Area, the staff will propose to prohibit the open waste pits because they, you know, given the number of people we have, we don't want to have a problem with that. Um, there are additional things that go along with this full application in the southeast area, and one of those is on page 18, item 7, is something of a clear um, area, uh, 750 feet in all directions. We want to have a clear area that does not involve any structures that are owned or leased by someone who is not involved in this operation. We want to make sure that we have a clear zone for safety purposes and in the southeast this is something we will require of those applications and also um, there is a requirement for what's called a sound mitigation structure um, i think that this is something we would probably want to include pictures of in our applications it is essentially a, a metal wall structure that surrounds the well in all directions that minimizes sound impact and we will have a sound decibel standard of 55 decibels to make sure that we are doing what we can to minimize the noise from this operation. This is a particular requirement of the Southeast State Energy Area given the number of people who live there. Are there any questions? Do, do we have any idea of how many areas are available that have a setback of 750 feet in the populated area. Is that very, very much property? Yes, yeah, it's around Joe Estates. Yeah. Okay. Is that You're not going to do this in the communities. You're not going to be able to meet those setbacks in the communities. But you will be able to in the Rio Rancho Estates area. Okay. Yes. Uh, so, Mr. Hill, you, you would be correct me if I'm, I want to understand what you just said, and that is. You will take under account the density population of certain areas in, in devising uh, sound uh, uh, decibels that come out of any production of a well or, or you, test wells. You and, and you'll be sensitive to you'll be sensitive to to those surrounding areas of higher density populated areas. Yes, Mr. Chairman, Commissioner, we're doing that. Yes. Okay. Yes. Again. This is a, dr a draft, but you can right. say 750 isn't enough, or it well, applies I'm, across the county, all that stuff. I'm confident that we can probably find data in other communities that has worked and not worked. Yeah. Right. Kind of. Right. Well, the decibel level, for example, is Albuquerque's daytime decibel level. Yeah. That's where we took it from. So it's Albuquerque's. The funny thing is in sand and gravel, we were discussing this earlier, uh, sand and gravel is 70 decibels. The reason why it's 70 decibels is because the federal government requires it. Those beeps you hear are at 70 decibels. And OSHA requires that. So that's why it's set at that level. We used Albuquerque daytime. 
All right, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, two more articles. Article four is the general provisions for oil and gas. This is where we describe standards that are not specifically found in all of these application requirements that you will see, but we'll describe some of those things. And of note is um, road improvements, agreements, and standards. Sometimes we you know, need to have an understanding of not just the route, but the actual, you know, the equipment on trucks and what the expectation is as far as the operation of those things. We get into that a little bit as far as um, the chains, the heavy equipment, the amount of traffic. Those things are spelled out in our road standards because this is where we add a little more detail to certain subjects and to make sure that people understand when we say road plan what all that is going to entail. Um, we cover storage tanks and lighting uh, briefly. The terrain management plan standards are a little more lengthy simply because issues having to do with soils, topsoils, changes, drainage and erosion, those kinds of things would make the description in the application section very, very lengthy. So in the general provision section, this is where we put those things. We want to make sure that in all instances, when we say terrain management plan, that there's a standard for that. And this is where we describe that standard. Um, the general section also includes financial securities, which we will require from all of these facilities. There are two general ones that are proposed in the language. One is a, a general liability, um, and it is described in section one on page 22. The second section on page 23 is there in the event that the general insurance does not cover anything regarding um, the environment. If their general policy doesn't cover environmental impacts, they will be required to submit something separate specific for environmental impacts. And so we include those in the general section to make sure that everyone understands that this applies to everyone. Uh, are there any questions on Article 4, Commissioners? You might as well go through the rest. Okay. Um, okay. Then Article 5 administration is um, also more boilerplate. Many of the things that are in here are already in the, the zoning ordinance. Variances, nonconformities, appeals, those all come out of the zoning ordinance that we have right now. What is different with this ordinance has to do with the posting of applications, notifications. We will um, post these online, as we always do with people. We're letting people know when they're going to be posted. Um, the notification requirements will involve contacting agencies within a three mile radius of the site to make sure that everyone within that radius are going to be notified by the county when we receive an application so if the um, native pueblos, municipalities, other jurisdictions have any concerns, they're going to get a letter from us and they'll have an opportunity to comment. So we're building that specifically into this ordinance. Um, other than that... Um, so if I understood you correctly, so no matter what application process they're going through or where in the county, that will be posted and everybody will have an opportunity to see that. Yeah, uh, Mr. Chairman, Commissioner Brown, yes, that's correct. Yeah. Are there any questions? Uh, Commissioner Trujillo. Mr. Hill, I, uh, you know, I didn't see where there, were any, there weren't any setbacks in the Northwest development area. Is, uh, are you going to see any setbacks regarding, you know, uh, neighbors or, I, I saw you did for the, or the urban areas, and, and yeah, it's very difficult to find a place where you can actually have 750 feet either way. But in the rural areas, it seemed like you know, uh, you know, like for housing and stuff like that's 10 feet from property line. But I didn't see any setbacks at all. Are you looking at setbacks, or are you just kind of let it based on the application or how close it is to a neighbor? Or? Uh, Mr. Chairman, Commissioner Trujillo, we did. 
we did look at a number of, of setbacks from um, individual uses. And we actually called those uses out in previous drafts of the ordinance. And then we began to realize that there are probably just as many, of, if not more, that may exist that, that we didn't mention. And that's why we went to the 750 standard. At this point, it applies to the southeast area. Right. But, right. but that is um, an item of discussion. Okay. okay. However, if I may, you do have a relief section uh, that allows for um, if you're out in the middle of nowhere and you're not affecting anybody, uh, if there's any provision in the Northwest that uh, the property owner and the applicant would like relief from, they can come ask you for relief. And we can write it. That's the whole idea. Is we're going to go through this, and if Correct. we think that there should be a setback in the Northwest, yeah. we'll put it in. If I may, we'll probably need a little bit of help on setbacks. You, setbacks are, are a tricky little matter because as soon as you start requiring horizontal drilling, then you're in trouble. Right. Okay. We cannot require that. Um, so we may need a little help on setbacks, but we need to be careful about that. Right. That's good. Any other questions from Peter? Okay, now if you understand that we're, we're going to go through this in great detail. Okay. We just asked Makita to give us some overall sense of sort of what's where. Certainly one thing that occurred to me immediately that we might want to address is you define the yellow areas as less dense, but what density? You know, what, where, where do we draw the line? But I, I want to call everybody's attention to, I mean, look, for example, at the very bottom part of the map, the parts in red, Rio Rancho Estates, Community of Placitas, and so forth. Notice that those areas are surrounded by blue, which means we have no jurisdiction here. Okay. Now, we have jurisdiction in the red, we have jurisdiction in the yellow, we don't have anything in the blue. Okay. So, uh, notice the, that the blue area around all of our communities is very extensive and very close, okay? And so it's, uh, it's, it's an important thing to think about that someone else is gonna issue a permit for an oil well, you know, presumably right on the border of Rio, of Rio Rancho Estates, or presumably, well, I don't think they do it in Placitas because nobody has ever looked for oil there, but. There's very few areas where there's a sort of smooth transition from red, which we are going to regulate more intensively, to yellow, which we're going to regulate less intensively, to blue, which someone else does. It tends to be either we're regulating and 20 feet away, someone else is doing it, and there's an entirely different set of standards. So let's, let, before we open it up for public comment, let's talk about uh, have we have we notified the commissioners that, that we intend to meet every two weeks? Is, it, is this the first time you've heard anything like this? Okay. No. So, okay. The only direction we got was have us. Yeah. Okay. So ordinance by the end of the year. So we're not going to meet in two weeks, and people oh, no, 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 more no. notice than that. Oh no, we are meeting July 11th. Yes, sir. I, did I misunderstand the question? No. I, I at least have not seen a schedule that shows no, the July 11th. Uh, no, I heard it was uh, no schedule. No, yeah. I haven't. I, I would like to planning, you know, uh, vacations this summer. Yeah. Uh, Pardon me. Yeah. So, we so let's that we let's start the two that. weeks <laughs> after the next regularly scheduled meeting, so that people basically have six weeks notice that we're going to start meeting every two weeks. So we will meet. We will meet. For, you know, on the fourth Thursday of July, which is our regular meeting. We've already posted July 11th. 11. Oh, okay. It's July. out in the paper. It's been, yeah, it's been presented. So it's too late. Okay. Who, who can come on July 11th? Let's first see if we've got the door. Sweating, but I'll make it. Yeah, I can make it. Okay. One. Over here. Okay, one. Two. 
one, two, three. We need two more. Okay, four. So we, we, we need to pull the other two members to find out if they're going to be here because there's no sense in having a meeting if we don't have a quorum. Although we're not going to take any action, I guess. Four is a quorum, Mr. Chairman. Oh, four is a quorum? That's right, because there's seven. Okay. Correct. So we will, okay. so we will have a meeting. Now, can you, can you be prepared to discuss that long list in 1.6 in two weeks? Uh, we had a staff meeting this morning and discussed it. That's what we're going to shoot for is that long list by the July 11th meeting. Okay. So at, um, two weeks from now, we will look at section 1.6, which is A through O, all these uh, state and federal ordinance or statutes that uh, we need to understand because as this ordinance is now written, somebody else is going to have responsibility for all the stuff that's here, including defining standards, uh, inspecting, uh, all that other stuff. Okay. Yes, sir. So and we'll have you a meeting schedule also, Mr. Chairman, by the middle of next week. We'll okay. send that out to everybody. Fine. Okay. Okay. And then, and then uh, I'll work with you uh, to define a, a set purpose for each one of the meetings. Okay. I would guess probably we'll get to uh, actually discussing changes in the ordinance and taking public testimony on the ordinance probably in the first meeting in August. Do you think that's reasonable? Yeah, but we have to add all the other. We have to add the extra yeah. teams. Um, Mr. Chairman, the, the, the July 11th meeting was already approved uh, by this body okay. uh, for earlier this year when you approved all the meetings. Okay. So that was approved. Right. But okay. we'll send you out. So what are the dates for the July meetings? Um, July 11th hand? So July far, we only have July 11th that you've approved, but we need to do the 25th also. Is it the 25th? Because of the two applications that we have. Okay, so meeting on July 11th, only on oil and gas. Correct. Specifically devoted to Section 1.6A through O. Meeting on 725 to consider other applications and we will not get the oil and gas unless there's time to, to deal with it, or do we just want to announce that we won't do oil and gas at that meeting? You well, said that what we're proposing is that we'll just put it on every meeting that you have, so if you have time and you want to move on to something, you at least have the ability to do yeah, that. And I, you know, I, I want the public that's interested only in oil and gas and doesn't care about a barn and if this and is your blanca blanca to, if that's have to what sit through a, a dis, an intense discussion only to discover that the intense discussion took the whole meeting and we never got the oil and gas. Well, the only issue I have with that is what if we don't have any applications? Now we've got well, we'll, we'll because typically we oh okay yeah I, mean, I understand that. Okay. So yeah no I understand. So it's not that. just the date, but when you're if, since I know you're interested in this issue, you want to look on the website and we will. It'll tell you there whether we're going to discuss oil and gas at that meeting or not. If we've got one simple, you know, family cluster right. in some remote area that's going to take five minutes, right. and we'll do oil and gas. Right. If there's something complex or we're, we're not quite sure how the public is going to react to a proposal to put a bar somewhere, we probably will not put oil and gas on that meeting, even if it's a short meeting, because. Uh, we have no ability to figure out how many people are going to come out or how many, how much time we have to devote if, if it's a contentious issue. But you'll know and if it doesn't, if you look at, at a notice for the meeting and it doesn't say oil and gas somewhere, it means we're not going to talk about it that night. Mr. Chairman, our website hits our only third to assessor and treasurer. Okay. Our, our notices are watched real close. Okay, fine. Please. So anything else related to the ordinance? Okay. So back to the agenda. Somewhere here. Okay, staff report. Do we have any staff report? No. Uh, well, just real quick. Let me go over it real quick. I've only got a few minutes. And it's administrative. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to be changing 
I guess from the way I've talked to IT and the public information officer and everything like that, kind of need to go towards the uh, county commission's way of doing business, which is paperless business. Uh, just to give you a heads up, uh, we'll need to talk to all of you about your, your internet and all that kind of good stuff and being able to get the ability to get on the website so you know where to go and everything like that and we'll get you some pads and all that kind of good kind of stuff. But I just wanted to give you a heads up. We'll we'll probably talk to you at the end of the month about that. I, I'd suggest excessive explanation at the beginning and when yeah. I tell you we don't need all that explanation you can stop, but better you give us too much about what to do than too little and we're looking for a document somewhere and can't find it. Correct. Uh, any discussion items? 